with the entrepreneurs that you were serving? The biggest thing that I would say was not only a lack of information, I would say it would be the lack of like connecting the dots. So wisdom. So the wisdom of how to apply and how to execute. We had some people that had a lot of zeal, but they didn't have the direct, the, the, the proper knowledge, the proper information. So we had somebody who, you know, I, I can go through so many different stories, but I'll, I'll highlight one. One person had hired a marketing firm and they were paying, and this marketing firm was gladly taking their money and they didn't even have, they hadn't gotten a business license. They hadn't gotten the permits they had. And so I'm like, why are you paying these people? But they were so convinced that their business in the beverage industry was just going to take over the world. But they, so I can tell you that when you first start on your entrepreneurship journey, it's not always going to be pretty. Sometimes you just go and you go on faith. This is, uh, we got Andre Benjamin on today. He's going to be talking to us about that. Talk about some of his project that he's ca has coming up. And then we're going to talk a little bit about how you can take this project that he has coming up and we're going to maximize the marketing. We're going to do some, some real cool ninja tactics, y'all. We're going to jump into it. So Andre, I was asking you off, off camera about, High school, Andre. Right? Yes. And then what's led you to here? I want to finish that conversation. I want to have everybody else Absolutely. to hear a little bit of that too. Absolutely. So as I was sharing with you, man, thank you for having me. Uh, what I would say is that high school was, uh, it was such a, you know, as the one author writes, it was the best of times. It was the worst of times, right? It <laughs> can be so cliche, yet it, it's so all-encompassing in the way that it describes what's going on. When you're going through, you know, you, you know, you you came through puberty. Now you're entered into the high school. My voice even cracked when I said puberty. You hear that? It was still. <laughs> it went back to high school, Andre. A residue. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was it was an interesting time because I had I was born I'm born and raised in Seattle, and so when I got to high school, I was trying to turn over a new leaf because elementary school and, and and middle school was quite tumultuous. It was. Uh, filled with a lot of um, misunderstanding, teachers not really knowing how to differentiate their instruction towards me, me having walking around with some labels over myself that were not defining of who I was, even though my parents can tell me one thing about myself. And, you know, I could have maybe some teachers that believe in me, but it was I had a, a teacher that was in first grade, speak a word curse over me that was just like, oh, you know, the word was, it wasn't as sanitized, but back then they'd said something like, you know, well, are you retarded? You know, and it was like, you know, there was not mentally or, or, you know, developmentally disabled. We didn't have all these type of terms. She said that and it cut like, you know, butter, you know, like knife, a hot knife through butter. And um, it, it got rectified in the sense that my mom, went up and professionally handled that and talked to the principal and they, you know, we ended up getting a new teacher and, uh, but it did affect me. And that was the story that I walked under for so many times. I had a, a false identity as one, one author wisely calls it a lie identity. I had a, I, a lie identity that was, you know, now making me believe that I was a, I was a, a left-hander trapped in a right-hand world. <laughs> <laughs> and so it, it was, yeah, high school was, was interesting, full of, uh, you know, lots of joy yeah, with friends, yeah. but lots of challenges at the same time. Yeah. That's and always it's, curious, it's man. 90s. <laughs> I love the idea of, um, and I heard this, this other YouTuber talk about that. He, he had mentioned, you know, what was like the high school person um, and the transition. Right. I'm a full time entrepreneur. You're entering full time entrepreneurship. And I was always curious about, OK, where are the seeds of who we've become? Where did that start? Absolutely. For me, it was always I just started looking at stuff and saying, man, it would this make sense to continue this way or should I try something new? So that trying something different, that reinvention that 
always kind of, you know, being curious about stuff that leads me to a uh, a career. You know, I remember, for example, that I, I was saying, man, I was out of high school at this time and I'm like, man, I'm paying rent to my landlord. And I says, what would it be like to pay myself rent? It's good question. So then that led to that's well, a powerful question. Yeah. What would it be like paying myself? And I was like, well, what does that mean? Of course, I didn't know it at the time, but I, I thought, well, you know, I could buy my own house. Yes. And that's what I did. I bought a two family house when I was 19. Let's go. Right. Two family. And then in that two family, it was like, OK, I got somebody upstairs paying my house note. Then I had a roommate paying myself rent. It's one of those kind of things, man, that led me into my first forays into entrepreneurship. All right now, you happen to we both like for the last several years have worked with entrepreneurs. Absolutely. Right? You in Seattle, the joy here in Grand Rapids. When you tell me some of the things that you continually noticed as a struggle with the entrepreneurs that you were serving? The biggest thing that I would say was not only a lack of information, I would say it would be the lack of like connecting the dots. So wisdom. So the wisdom of how to apply and how to execute. We had some people that had a lot of zeal but they didn't have the direct the, the the proper knowledge, the proper information. So we had somebody who, you know, I, I can go through so many different stories, but I'll I'll highlight one. One person had hired a marketing firm, and they were paying. And this marketing firm was gladly taking their money, and they didn't even have. They hadn't gotten a business license. They hadn't gotten the permits. They had, and so I'm like. Why are you paying these people? But they were so convinced that their business in the beverage industry was just going to take over the world, but they hadn't even started out. They don't know anything about this beverage business. They don't know enough about it. They don't have a, a, a practical recipe that's good, but they almost just have a delusional excitement about it. So I think we've had that side of the spectrum to we had those who are good in business and they have a solid product, but they don't have the confidence and the courage you know how people say it takes uh, money to make money. And I don't believe mm -hmm. that. I believe it actually takes mm -hmm. courage to make money. And That's people good. having that courage to, to get out there and always be selling, to get out there and always be problem solving, to get out there and always adding value to others. And I heard someone say that uh, this morning, I was listening to a podcast and somebody said the statement about how they said, you know, people people who come from a background of serving others and they are kind of indifferent towards money or they don't have the right training around that, mm -hmm. they believe that when they receive money, it negates the service. So that's why they're always in a rush to give things away for free. Mm -hmm. Whereas the receive, receiving payment is proof and it's receipts that you actually help someone. And I said, oh, my gosh, it blew my mind as a paradigm. So I see that side of the spectrum to where somebody's super, uh, you know, zealous and then they don't have the proper knowledge. I see the side of the person who actually has the product that can add value, but they're almost giving it away for free. Then I see the person who is doing well, but they've not built. They have only basically built themselves a job. So they don't know about how to put systems in place. They don't know how to collaborate, make strategic collaborations and alliances and allegiances. They don't know how to uh, put some automation in the areas that can be automated. They don't know to, how to leverage and utilize the technology that's available for them to help bring some accelerators in them. And they don't understand the value or the understanding of what the asset is, the actual what are assets and what are income producing assets versus, you know, liabilities. Mm -hmm. So just I think some of those basic frameworks have been missing. And to me, my greatest joy comes from taking people to zero to one. 
And what I mean from that is that it doesn't matter what their stage is, if they've been stuck somewhere, it's to help them gain the clarity and the confidence and their capability to be able to execute in their area of expertise and value. So, you That's know, good. working with businesses and the health sector, you know, someone who's in the healthcare sector, then you got businesses who are in the landscaping, then you got businesses in the food and sector, then you got businesses that are in the education sector, uh, just working, then you got businesses that are in the um, logistics and moving sector, working with companies from various backgrounds and various industries and various verticals, it, yet a lot of the problems are still the same. It, it goes you know, you can kind of cross pollinate with or you can kind of take the principles and dump them into different industries because it, it's just it's a principle. So I that's what I see with entrepreneurs have been the biggest challenges that they've either they have those 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 challenges ahead of them. So I'm going to hit if y'all heard that, I want to see some stuff in the comments. Did you hear all of the problem statements now, as problem solvers, if you're listening to this and you're saying, I'm a problem solver or your business or service is a problem solver for the four to five things that Andre just dropped out, you should be picking this up with your satchel because when we drop gold, we say, pick it up. What do you, what do you, why do you got your, just your hands, right? Bring your satchel, pick these up and then ask yourself this question. How can my business, how can my service who do I know that can connect with me with what I do that can solve these problems that are consistent? These are problems that don't seem to go away. As you have more entrepreneurs coming on, y'all, you have that chance to go, oh, in my bag, I've got the solution to that problem that you will face coming up. And one of the big ones I heard was A, information. B, uh, connecting the dots. So I got stuff, but I haven't connected the dots. I've got a product, but I haven't connected the dots. Or you're so hyped on emotion. And this is something that really breaks my heart. When I see someone that is so fired up emotionally, but the foundations of being able to spin the business up isn't there. One typically wins. And it's usually what I've noticed is emotion. I want this thing right now. I wanted to start right now. And that's the emotion part. And then when we come in and say stuff like, well, let me help you build this foundation on the house that you've already built that has, is not sitting on anything. Right. You get a little pushback every now and then. But I'm telling you, y'all, if you're listening to this and you start asking yourself, well, what does it look like to build the foundation right? Put the house on it and then extend the house as you desire. What would that look like? All right, we're going to be talking a little bit about that because Dre, Andre has a couple of products that he is finishing up right now. I'm going to have him talk about that. I want y'all to put in the comments any curiosities you have about that, any questions that you have about that. Andre, I don't know if you had any um, paperwork or, you know, cover art or anything, but tell us about this new project. I'm interested in it. Well, it's, don't be don't be shy now. It's super secret. It's hot off the press, right? We're it's been in the works for quite some time, and it, it is a new series that's launching, talking about growing up in the Pacific Northwest. So you know, Dre Beeson is the main character. He's a young man that is trying to a young boy that's a nine year old just navigating his way in the Pacific Northwest adventures outside with his friends, loves to get outside, love for reading, love for music, love for the culture. Think about, you know, how it was in the eighties. And if you didn't grow up in the eighties, you just have to take a journey with me. And that's what this product serves as a window. It's a portal, you know, it's a portal to another time where things were simpler. It's a portal to a time where last key children existed. <laughs> and the parents, when the, neighbor, when the neighborhood would whoop you. <laughs> uh, when the neighborhood would whoop you. Oh, I know your, I know your, your father. Oh, they, you, and that, that's what it you comes from. People, your neighbors is, is they, if they snitch on you if they see you doing something. It, it's, it's a connected community. So that's what this story is about. It's about the adventures of Dre Beeson, um, over imaginative, just a great kid, great, great atmosphere. And he has to navigate through some 
bozos that kind of try to impede him and his friends, but just learning his, his way throughout the world. And it's a very, 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 uh, you know, it, it's an eye-opening joy builder for people. When I've let people hear excerpts, everything from the audio, because it has the written, you know, we, we're, we're doing the different mediums. We got the written, we got the audio. There's going to be some visuals to go with it. We've got the uh, soundtrack. We've got the score. We've got, the you know, NFT to go with. For those of you who are more on the digital savvy side and you want to have something collector, you want to see something in the early stages and how it got to where it is, we have a 10 um, part NFT that's available. So this is a, it's a groundbreaking project because it's not only episodic, it is encouraging. And so people can navigate and how to really start to grow in love with their own uniqueness, their own unique and, and strategic and distinct abilities. Like what is it that you do so great? What makes you unique? You are, you're, everybody's unique in the universe and everybody has something that they bring to the table. So that's what, that's a little bit, a little snapshot of the. That's good. That's good. And one of the things Dre and I were talking about yesterday uh, is some very specific things to do uh, and bringing in a little AI for help. Dre was mentioning. Oh, let's see it. That's the logo. S O A. So ashy. So, so ashy. Oh, man. You're killing <laughs> it's the me. Ash Man Chronicles. So, so ashy. <laughs> Ash Man Chronicles. And yeah, we were talking about how to launch it. Right. So Dre called me up and was asking me, um, you know, some filler questions because he's he's got it pretty much figured out. And this is what I want to talk to and look literally right into the camera, talk to the entrepreneurs. You're going to have a lot of stuff almost and just figured out. You you got it all right there in your head. You know what you want to provide to the public. But one of the things that I caution you with is, well, let's find out if the public wants it first. Because sometimes they don't. And we put in all that work and that's where our feelings get hurt. Now, we don't want our feelings hurt in business. And in order for us not to get our feelings hurt, what we do is test stuff. And that's what I was telling Dre. I said, there's no perfection. You know, there's no doing it just right. And that's what we ended on yesterday. I said, there's no doing it just right. It is getting it done, putting it out there, putting it out there for test in the most reasonable, cost-effective way possible so we get information. And that information then drives us to these other doorways or opportunities, right? Because you listed off, I think, about four or five, four or five things that are being created alongside. Absolutely. But we want to get it out there, talk to people, have them ask for more or different ways, and then offer that. So we can go ahead and continue our conversation on um, where we were yesterday about how to put it out there into the atmosphere. Definitely. So, my, you know, my, my questions stem around with <clears throat> how to create the most value for this social emotional learning experience so this is something that is for it's definitely i, I love i love this word i loved it since i was a child and uh, really when i hit about 20 years old many moons ago i i i love the word edutainment that yeah. it's both educational uh -huh. and it's entertaining that it is it is enthralling it's engaging it's eye-opening it's activates you it's not just something that you consume it's not what people consider if if a person really looks at the word education you know there's a great saying uh, called you know don't let your don't let your schooling get in the way of your education yeah. right don't let it stop yeah. your learning and so education comes from the word educe means out to draw out to call forth right so a, a real educate the difference between education and schooling is that in schooling schooling people are going to typically to a building systematic with you know pedagogy seats desk you know and they're getting curriculum that's disseminated to them in a particular manner mm -hmm. education on the other hand is you know you think of 
you, you, you think of the problem with modern school system is that the American school system is based upon take us that taking these kids and seeing them as empty vessels and then trying to fill them up with mm -hmm. information that they will recall and that they don't usually care about. It's like, hey, the road memorization and people are falling asleep. It's answering questions that nobody's asking. So it's like, oh, the war of this, blah, 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 blah. And no disrespect to those that are passionate and that are out there and that got into, you know, the education for a particular reason. Education, on the other hand, it means it sees these children as full vessels that need to be drawn out from. So it's like drawing out to call out, to call forth, right, to lead forth, to bring out the best in people so that they can operate as moral, productive citizens in a society, right? That they make the future better than the present, that they have a value that not only do they hear a history lesson and think, oh, wow, that was good for uh, Columbus, but they see themselves as a shaper of history. They see themselves a history maker. They see themselves as, oh, I don't need to just think about Carnegie, or I don't need to just think about Rosa, or I don't need to think about, I can, I can take what they did and learn from it. And what can I do in my day? And what can I do to, you know, be a, be a encouragement and to be a, a uh, blessing to the future generation, so to speak. Yeah. So this is what I like about, you know, when we talk about the different mediums is how mm -hmm. do you, how do you take it, the social, socio emotional learning experience and how do you bring out that which is dormant in these students so that I want those that have not, and I know it because it's it's going to happen, it's it's already happening, is that those who are who are not in touch with their love for reading or those that are reluctant readers or those that hate reading, this is for, this is targeting those eight to 12 year olds. And this is giving them an exciting adventure that they can now begin to deploy their imagination. They now have content to them that, Hey, I don't understand this word. He's using a kind of bigger word. Well, they see the context around it. There's curriculum that goes to help them to figure what this out and how to, they can be able to use that in an arsenal. Cause the bigger, the amount of vocabulary, the bigger the world is to them, the bigger, the more access language brings access to opportunities and it allows pictures to be fuller in a frame. So I, I want that to be something that pulls people out of reluctant reading, that gets people out of the main character struggles with that because he loves to read, yet he has to dumb that down and suppress that navigating what does it mean to be his authentic self versus what people think about you can you can you be a can you be a multiplicity can you be a combination of so many things or do you kind of have to be this monolith or this stereotype of what people think you should act like so it's it's a it's a fun journey because you just heard that y'all imagine what that teacher who made that statement is saying now right imagine now any teacher, anybody that said something negative about you that's affected you and your accomplishments, the thing that made you do the stuff you do speaks to them. That's enough. Right. We don't need to send them pigeons and say, hey, I want to let you know how I've become, <laughs> you know, because we've all had we all lived a life. I like to say this a lot, Dre. We all lived a life before the one we're living. Absolutely. Right. Well, I'll live the life. These and are I the say, things that made me. And then, and, then <laughs> and I say sometimes when what suited up, don't let the suit fool you. Right. Yes. We all live the life before the one we live in. So the question becomes, what is the new life that you want to live? What is it that you want to do differently? How do you want to reinvent yourself? And using what medium? So I love this idea of what you've put together. Because to me, it is, again, one, a reflection of some stuff that's informing you, childhood, blah, blah, blah. And then you're basically saying, hey, don't be so ashy. So I'm going to show you how not to be so ashy. <laughs> 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 you know, and um, so as you're. Uh, and that's really, and I love that you touched on that because that's really a mentality, right? It's because of him having excessively dry skin. That's why it's even called the Ashman Chronicles. It's because of him. The, him having such excessively dry skin and his mom trying to make sure that 
he always is presentable, goes out and that, and then he, but he doesn't care. He just plays. He just is himself. Yeah. He's just being himself. So it's a mentality that says, can you be who Curiosity. you are really and not what people tell you, you know, not what somebody's impression of what you should. It's like going to a guidance counselor or any type of counselor. And there you literally see them trying to lead the conversation and trying to lead you to where you want. They're not drawing out. They're not asking you questions that are empowering questions. They're asking you questions that are framed in a narrative that make you a victim rather than a victor. And I refuse that narrative. And I'm saying, People have the opportunity to shape their own narrative. You have the opportunity to say, wait a minute, this is the lens through which I see the world. So when we were talking, we were saying, how do we take that and how do we get that to the most amount of people? How do we how do we identify the audience that's there? How do we see, you know, what um, tools are 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 there to accentuate this and to make it more accessible? How do we leverage I mean, I'm finding out that there's tools out there that translate. And, you know, I'm like, yeah. what? In and, the world? and I use these tools because I'm all about utilizing AI, you know, and um, making stuff better faster. I literally, Dre, yesterday I was on a, um, a workshop with Startup Grind Grand Rapids. And in this particular workshop, this is our second one, depending on when you're listening to this. And I had, this one was all about AI voice agents. Right. So just about AI voice agents, the one um, the previous month was going over the different AIs. Now, you happen to like perplexity, which I love. And but now they've come out with some. Oh, my gosh. Just some really cool stuff that allows us so much things. I'll give you an example. Um, Right now, I'm looking at my, my computer screen. I got a couple screens up here and I have one that literally sits on the screen um, as a plugin, or I should say a plugin, but I should say as an extension. And it will allow me to use four different AIs. I can use Google, Gemini. I can use OpenAI, obviously, ChatGPT, 3.5, 4.0, whichever one. I can use Mistral. And then the other one is I can use Anthropics. Um, so it gives me the choice depending on what I want done to use them. One of the things is summarizing things. So I literally can go to a YouTube video and it will summarize it for me. I can go to a website. It will summarize it for me and give me the content in this way. Now, these are beyond, I bought it, I own it because I don't like paying monthly, but I will pay monthly. The point is, is that now we've got these AI tools in a variety of fashions to do stuff faster, obviously quicker, and get us the kind of answers that we're looking for. You use perplexity, ask it a couple of, and I heard it was really well engineered. The question was really well engineered. And it gave you some answers. So now and I, love, I love how you're demystifying because I want to I want to interject this. Yeah. Is that I'm the, I'm a, I'm a close to the vest type person. I'm early adopter, but I'm early adopter quietly. Like I'll start playing with stuff quietly because I'm mm -hmm. skeptical and being more on the skeptical side and being more on the, I'm generation X, right? I'm a dying breed. Like I'm the, <laughs> that's at least the, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're Rambo and Rocky and all of it. We all in the same bunch, but check this out is that with that being said, as a person that was a slower to adopt, Randy mm -hmm. knows I asked a ton of questions. Mm -hmm. And so when I started to see it as that, I said, I don't want to give up my thinking capacity to, mm -hmm. I don't want to, I don't I, want to I remember that. Technology. So I don't have a nerdy dream. I don't have the Silicon Valley kind of nerd dream that one day I'll be just be sipping pina coladas on the beach and, you know, everything is like the Jetsons and I don't ever have to do anything, lift a finger like George was, you know, getting a cramp in his finger, you know, because <laughs> that, was, that was his work was to push a button or everything is just voice automated and I don't have to think or I'm getting fat like the people in Wally -E and not being productive. Mm -hmm. No, I told him and when I understood somebody said it's like, you know, if you see these as extensions of 
tools that can bring assistance to you. So if somebody says chat GPT, somebody said chat GPT, I have a ton of people, Randy included, that have been utilizing it, that love utilizing it. Hey, you can see that as a thinking partner. You can see that as a thinking partner that's on your staff, that's helping you brainstorm, think through frameworks, bring some considerations in that you may not have considered that was available that because it's availing itself of the knowledge that's available there. Perplexity, on the other hand, you could see it as a research partner that is helping you to go in depth and with research. And you have to, the, the quality of, that's why I was saying what Randy, when he said about the question about, can I own a house? Can I pay myself as a house or whatever the question mm -hmm. he asked at 19 or 18, whatever the age was. I said, it's a powerful question because the power of the question determines the power of the answer, right? The strength of that question can bring forth so many answers. So I just want to interject that for people that listen mm -hmm. and still be on the fence about, and this is not a pro, you have to use AI. You may be fine doing whatever you're doing. I'm saying that if a person is curious about how to utilize it, don't go further than you would, but to, to go avail yourself of the tools that are available because you don't want to miss out. And so it, in, it encourages me when I'm hearing about things of saying, I'm thinking about when I think about Ashman and I think about, well, wait a minute, what's a huge audience here in America and globally? Mm -hmm. Is I got my Spanish speaking brothers and sisters. Two of my kids are Spanish speakers and because we put them in Spanish immersion. So I'm like, you know, my third, our oldest now is taking Spanish in school. So I, I don't, I don't want to miss out on a whole good part of the world that's available if there's something that can translate it, switch for them, and give them the same exposure and opportunity. Right, and that that part becomes where the opportunity lies. Now, here's what's key: is when I, uh, Andre was using perplexity, and this is where some of the um, coaching, if you will, comes in, is. I noticed what perplexity had suggested as a couple of AIs to use to um, because of the the way he engineered the question. The question, I don't know if you can remember the question, uh, Dre, but um, when he asked that question, I was like, okay, that's a good question. And then it gave back some information. And because I use these tools, I was like, well, substitute that tool for this one. Yes. Because I found that it works better. And then it was another one that I says, okay, I would probably use this tool because it's going to give you a more refined kind of answer. So that's one of those situations where you could just lean on the AI. But sometimes when people have, are out there working with it, you know, if they're if you if you kind of like brought in a consultant or a coach or something like that to kind of help you guide guide you through some stuff, that's where that piece of knowledge is. What do you use? And that's what Dre was asking me. It's like, well, you know, what other tools could we use to get this out to the highest distribution channel? Because right? I want to vet it. I want to vet it past humans. Because human is human intelligence is the intelligence that is creating any of these other mediums. So right. period. It's like it's a, these are channels, you know. Yeah. And so I look at it as I say, no matter what. There's the, the 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 empathy. There's the critical thinking. There's the creativity. There's so many elements of humanness that is missing from something. So I'm going to vet it and run it by and say, well, what have you found has been useful? You know, what would you say about this? You you hear the dilemma that I'm facing, and you hear the problem that I'm looking to solve. Tell me some of your thoughts. And so he's tweaking and refining, and that's my encouragement to you as well. It's like somebody sitting back and saying. I mean, I know there's people that are doing it, but there's people who want these things to write books for them or research papers or whatnot, or they make a stellar resume for them, but then they are expecting, make me, get me a job that pays me a million dollars a minute. And it's like, okay, you step into that world. And if you really can't deliver the goods because you were depending on your tool to make you better than yourself, then you're the one that's robbing yourself of, of bread. The, the the joy of learning and the joy yeah. of discovery. And that's why we use it alongside. I like to say AI empowered, right? And um, AI assistant, human assistant, whatever you want to call it, you leverage it that way. And I think you'll have a, a lot more success. Specifically with one of the areas Dre was asking about yesterday. And one of the things you also have to consider is not trying for perfection. So so my recovering perfectionist out there, 
I'm talking to you as I'm one, right? I'm recovering, y'all. Leave me alone. So I'm saying we try things, right? We try distribution channels. And that's one of the things that I suggested to Dre yesterday is, hey, let's let's take a portion of it. You've got a portion done. So let's put that portion on its own landing page, let's say. Yes, because that's what drive traffic to like what tools are there to repurpose the content. So how do you repurpose? How do you take it, chop it up and repurpose it in a way to disseminate it to your target market mm -hmm. effectively and consistently? Mm -hmm. And that's what we were getting ready to dive into. We'll probably go into a another part of this y'all if you want to hear maybe a part two as we apply the tool like i say as a, a business scientist right scientists experiment scientists have uh, uh, a belief that i'll get closer as i do more experiments if the first one works then we tri double triple quadruple down on it so we'll probably have a, a part two how did it go section? But now, Dre, you can ask me any question, man, that we didn't get to yesterday. And then yeah, have so, an I mean, for people to comment you know, some on of, it too. But some of the tools that it listed for, uh, you know, you gave me a few more that, let me look back at my notes. Uh, you gave me a few more to consider. You said have... I think it gave you Chopcast. Yes. Chopcast is a decent tool, but I found that um, from a price point perspective, that Opus.pro is 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 better. Now I use different ones. So let me just tell y'all right now, I might use three different tools because typically I test them out. And then I, I have a website that I talk about the tools that I use. Yes. And you talked so, about Opus. You talked about Opus. Opus. And you talked about in video. Yeah, that, I'd say uh, use in video instead of pictory. Yes. Right now, both decent tools. I've tested a lot of these tools out and made determinations. So when pick pictory is decent, but I found that in video AI, video.ai, y'all, you can go to it and check it out. And I'll leave some links to these things too, some, some of which I'm an affiliate for, but I'll leave links for a lot of these tools and give my explanation on them. But I found that it just works better. It is more intuitive. It really pulls the information and it gives you really good scenes. Some of the places that it pulls from to get the scenes I have found are better than Pictory. Pictory makes you do a little more work. And Dre now um, is fortunate enough to also work with virtual assistants, which is good. But some of us have more time that we can do this stuff ourselves until we get to the level where we have other people working with us and for us. So depending on where you're at on that spectrum, decide. But I want you to be able to use something that's going to go faster, that's going to be cost effective. That's always a consideration. And that gets you a really good results so you can go out there and test fast, right? And that's what I have to talk to Dre about. Because if you notice earlier from my conversation, y'all, that he had like four or five different things that he could, he got NFTs, he got all these different things. But oftentimes, entrepreneurs, hear me now, believe me later. Remember that from Saturday Night Live? Hear me now, believe me later. We don't suffer from lack of ideas. We suffer from too many. Mm. So I like to call, I've heard this said before, so this is not 100% mine, but it's called idea indigestion. <laughs> wow. Right? So idea indigestion is when you're having all these ideas and you don't spin them out and it's, it's, it has destroyed companies. Kodak was the first, guess what? Kodak was the first company that came out with digital stuff, but it was an idea that they, just had too many other ideas and they didn't want it to jump in and destroy this other idea that they had. And the other idea ended up going away. They could have been the first to digital, right? Blockbuster. Y'all have heard these stories before. Blockbuster. Uh, Netflix went to Blockbuster and says, would you like to buy us? 
they wouldn't even take the meeting. They were like, we don't need it. We got thousands of stores. We got this videotape stuff. We're good. Didn't even listen to it. Now they no longer exist. Right? When we're not able to test out our ideas and we're just so full that we get indigestion, that's where sometimes we bust. Focusing, testing, determining. I like to call it stick a toe in, right? Stick a toe in says, uh, does the water feel fine? Okay, it feels good. I'll stick now a foot in. Oh, that's good too? Great. Then I can go into these particular areas. You test in such a way that allows you to get information and to keep an eye on while you're focusing on this one thing, testing it. If it works, double, triple, quadruple down. If it does not work, then A, we've either found the wrong distribution channel. And this is what I want to say with you, Dre. We have to find the right distribution channel for where people are most likely to buy that product. And you got different products. So it's like your house has different rooms. Which room do we want them to come in first? Kitchen, living room, metaphors. Yeah. Right? Side, oh, back in the day, we had a, a laundry room where you come in the side door, right? And everybody in the family knew that side door and the salespeople would go to the front door, right? Because they didn't know that ain't where we had people come in. That's the furniture with plastic on it. So we have to decide what door we want people to come in first to get them into the house. Once in the house, then we can present other things that they may want to go to. So I think for us, man, as you think about your product, start putting it out in a format now. I would literally take a, pay, uh, a chapter, do a little reading. You've got audio already. Take a subsection of that. Put it on its own separate landing page, literally, and say, this is what's coming. It's being finished up now, but I want to share with you what I've got so far. What do you think? That gives people a chance to give you information, feedback, and get this user-generated content. They've used it, they've interacted, and they give you content back telling you what you should improve or if it's really, really good, you didn't triple down on it, that kind of stuff. But it starts with just putting things out there in a separate enough manner that is focused we understand we got the whole house, just one door. That part. One door. Let them in. See what they say. And then they say, oh, man, what else you got in this house? That's when you're rolling out the other things. What are your thoughts on that? My thoughts are I am taking thorough notes because <laughs> it makes quite the great amount of sense to have the figure out which channel to distribute on the right distribution channel where they're most likely to buy at. And those are the, you know, what are tools that help to identify the, the, the match, the audience match, you get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. it's like, I want to go where the hungry fish are feeding and swimming. Now, clearly I know the friends and family that tactic of I, this is not my first rodeo with putting out a book. This is the first with a children's series targeting mm -hmm. particular. So with that being said, I know to hit up teachers, educators, principals, administrators, you know, children's, you know, people who have businesses that are targeting children. I know how to hit them up for collaboration and put put a copy of things in their hands. Yet right. I'm when you're online, how do you get the, you know, how do you I'm I'm not that guy. I'm not the the we're currently the guy who's in the I need a particular who that is in that world and that's not just gonna try to play you with ripping you off. Let me run ads for you and more, more ads for you and more ads for you. What are you, what are the organic ways to go in and have great, great, create and join. And that's the thing is that I'm, I'm not opposed to, I want to join legitimate conversations that are out there. So if that means that on LinkedIn, that there's conversations that I need to get in rooms that I need to be in literature that, you know, I'm one of the things I thought about that people have been begging me to do for years because they always on the side ask me about is people are always asking me for book lists. What are you currently reading? What are you this? What are you that? They've been saying, why don't you start a, a thing that where you just literally just review books and you talk about the best things out of them. So I know that that is coming 
um, to, and I, and I know that naturally that might be, I might be answering my own question, but that, that is also, I've done that for parents with their, with children's books, like listing other children's books for them. Like here again, here's links and, and I'm not even an affiliate. So I probably should be earning some yeah. money from that yeah. as well. So because I, I will, I will tell you to do that, sir. Now, again, because of where you are now, that's full-time entrepreneurship. So again, as you, as you all listen to this and you say, well, wait a minute, I had a full-time job and now I do not because I wanted to bet on myself and be a better service and I needed the time to do it. Whatever reason you are deciding to become a full-time entrepreneur, now you start thinking about all your monetization opportunities that are different than what used to be. What used to be is two-week check, every month check, every week check, whatever it is, that now you have to think about the revenue and income producing activities that are on a daily basis. Now, I don't want to send too much information to y'all because I will, but I want you to be able to take this and disseminate it and look at the things that I've said in total and break apart the pieces that you can use today, All right? That that keeps me from the fire holes, you know, um, um, uh, parts that I have a, a tendency to do because I want to give it to you all. I'm going to give it all to you. So now we have AI that will break it out for us. So you use the AI. So in your particular case, you're constantly thinking about the monetization strategies, right? And you're saying, okay, where are these people? How do I know they're buying? Well, because you notice that they've been asking you for this thing already. Oh, that means they're hungry. Yes. And not only are they hungry, but they says, and we want it from you. That's a perfect opportunity. We want you to give us X, Y, Z. Those same folks are now saying, hey, your product's out. We now have to connect them to the fact that it's not all the way out, but it's out enough. Do you want to pre-buy some of these when it comes out? I pre-buy books all the time. Products, books, everything. Because I know that author oftentimes or that person, I trust their stuff. I trust their judgments, right? And then I'm waiting for whatever they got coming. So if they put a link out there and says, hey, here's a little bit of it. I know I like to build in private, but here's a little bit of it. The rest is coming, but go ahead and here's a link where you can pre-purchase it. Now you obviously are going to deliver, otherwise it's fraud, right? You got to make sure you deliver. Or if yeah. you can't deliver, you send people money back kind of a thing. But- you're a deliverer. So that's not a worry. Give them a buy button. Give them a way to go ahead and jump into what you have coming out. And if they're really eager to purchase it so they can um, you know, get grandfathered and grandmothered in to the world of whatever it is. That right there, man, I can tell you is one of the things that stop entrepreneurs all the time. They don't know how to sell it or present it. And we could go levels deep right now, finding the people, giving them a chance to buy. Hey, that's the first experiment. Here's a button. How many people pre-purchase? Oh, that's pretty good. Open that up. Quadruple down on that. And then if you determine that, dang, nobody's pre-purchasing, then it could be something either they don't want, they don't understand, they don't have time for, or they feel that it's just too many hoops to jump through, whatever, right? And then we start reducing those things out, making it super easy for them to buy, super easy for them to understand. That understanding sometimes comes in you getting on and saying, here's why I did it. Here's what it's for. Here's how I can benefit your life and life of your loved ones. Then they go, oh, I see it. Because they don't always understand a title like you. They may say, so ashy, what? What's happening here? And then you come in and says, well, it's really a metaphor for things that you may hear in. And now you're informed. So you're trying not to be so ashy with your actions. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, I get it. So that may take you talking about this, talking about how you came up with the idea and why it's important to you and why it could be important to them. Sometimes that's enough to connect. And they give them a button. 
And I'm going to tell y'all right now. And, I, and tell me what you think in the comments, y'all. You can make, you know, um, good, bad, or indifferent kind of comments about what I'm getting ready to say next is the amount of money you want to make with any project is determined by how many buy buttons you have out there for people to purchase from you. The amount of money you want to make. Now, I typically say in your business, in your life, whatever it is, is determined by how many buy buttons you have out there. Buy buttons is a metaphor for ways for people to purchase from you. Plain and simple. How many buy buttons? And Dre, you've heard this before. So that's why he's sitting over there like, yeah, hey, and we've worked together before. So it's like, mm -hmm. so in this yeah, case, give them buy buttons. Give them ways by which they can purchase that product. Now, this is before we get into um, influencer marketing. This is before we get into distribution marketing. This is this is just one strategy we're trying as an experiment, like you said, organically. And you notice that, y'all, organically typically means I want to try to do this without having to spend money. If it works organically because you've got an audience already, beautiful. And you you do have an audience. They have bought from you other books. Now, with this, uh, the... Um, Kids series, they've got an uncle or they've got a, a a nephew, a cousin, a brother, a friend, whatever, that may be in that age group. So you telling them, hey, listen, send this over to little Johnny, little Joan. And they go, oh, I know this guy. I'm doing that. That helps. But then when we extend out, we use some other type of techniques, y'all. We'll probably get into that in maybe part two if we do a part two of this and seeing how all of this worked. But in the meantime, we do that first. We get our first initial sales. We have people tell us how things went. How was that for your loved one? How was that for you? And then they give us some user-generated content. We then take that. says, here's what everybody's saying. Put that on its own page. Here's what everybody's saying about this product. So you don't have to believe me. You can just believe everybody else. Here it is. Do you want one too? By that time, Dre is probably out and it's not a pre-purchase uh, situation. It is, it's available now. Here's what people said, even in a pre-purchase. Thousands, hundreds of people pre-purchased it. And then that kind of helps people go, oh, well, I, I don't know you that well. I don't necessarily know them, but I trust the crowd. And that could get you more sales too. Love it. And the tools, I'll send you a link. I'll put some links too in the description field for everybody uh, on some tools that I'm an affiliate for and some tools that I'm not an affiliate for, but I know that they work really, really well. That's what I'm talking about, resourcing. Yeah, it is. So it's gotten to the point where I was in a um, a workshop last week. And we had a speaker in. And the speaker was talking, everybody was kind of like, OK, you know, whatever. I saw no pins go up until he started talking about resources. So, of course, that sparked an idea. I so, thought, hmm, I'm resource rich. I've got tons. And that's what kind of encouraged me to put together a single site with here are the tools I use to make money online. And I, I even bought the domain, tools to use to make money online. And I'm going to spin that up probably later this week. And then I'm going to just show the tools. Show me using them and, and let people decide for themselves. Here's some AI tools. Here's some non-AI tools. Here's some things I think can help you. Here's some free stuff. Here's some how I did it. Here's how I use it. Some instructions. Then also give people the opportunity, if you want me to help you with it, okay, let's work that out. I'll be your technical person, if you will. That part. So with you, I heard it earlier. You says people keep asking you to do this thing. That sounds like hungry fish, bro. I don't want to call people fish, but you know what I mean? That sounds like a place where you should be fishing. 
Absolutely. Especially if you're you're a reader like me. All right. My site is called um Can This Book Make You Bucks? So I'm telling people, I just read it. Here's what I think how it can help you make some money. What do you think? So every time I read a book, I put it on the site. Smart. Right? So what what does that do, y'all? Y'all now. If y'all have Googled me, you know, I call myself the Monetize Your Life guy. I've got Monetize Your Life Academy. I've got, you know, I told Linda, my wife, I said, Myla, my, my, Miles, Myla, and Millie, and Miley. She's like, what are you talking about? I says, well, there's Monetize Your Life Academy. I have Monetize Your Life Systems. And I says, I have... I, constantly give out monetize your life ideas mm -hmm. right that says mama <laughs> dad mama daddy child mm -hmm. she's like it's interesting you know when you can impress your wife after you know, oh it, ma it matters you're you're, you're, you're on if your <laughs> wife goes hey, that's a good idea because they know you right they've seen you Absolutely. they're used to you right so that becomes the thing y'all um, Dre, you can ask me anything, man. I haven't, I start work at, uh, today at, at noon here yeah, in the home I, office. So. I mean, this is, this is a good place to land the plane. I got enough meat to chew, um, and to really go forward. Uh, that was my key things was, and, and it, it came out through conversation, the value adding conversation caused for me to gain the clarity that I needed because it is a confirmation of why you do add value by, doing the very thing, being in the spaces that you need to be in. So mm -hmm. where are people having the conversations at? And then what conversations can I legitimately create? Well, I know books. I love books. I'm a constant learner. I constantly am. There's always a book in the cart that's coming. There's always several books that's coming. There's several books being read and annotated and torn apart and being taught to my children. And, you know, this is what it is. So this is, yeah, it's, it's time to uh, jump into that. So. Okay, so we will talk to you. Maybe Dre will come back on uh, on when he is at a different spot in the process. Absolutely. And then we will give you all the links to the good stuff, right? And um, anything right now that you already have, we'll go ahead and leave you links for that too, y'all. And in the comments, you know, if you saw some value from all of this, I'm going to leave you some links. So you can buy me coffee or whatever you want to do. I'm going to leave you the opportunity to go ahead and honor this this. These, these gold nuggets that we've been dropping. But if you thought we were just all two guys full of canal water, well, you can tell us that too. We'll talk to you next time.